What is going on to Nintendo Nation? I keep saying when I do these Super Mystery Dungeon videos that it's going to be the last one, so because I've got actually more stuff to talk about because the English website updated for the first time, I'm just never going to say it's my final video. You guys just look forward to more. Basically, as I said, English website is finally updated and we've got loads of information that we kind of knew about but we didn't know, you know, a lot of details about because it was all in Japanese, it was hard to translate, you know, some dungeons hadn't had names revealed. But we've got some in English, which is awesome. So what I'm going to do, guys, first, because we've got some gameplay first, some raw gameplay. I'm going to show you that first, and then I'm going to talk about everything else. So please enjoy the gameplay, and I will see you in a little bit. Now I know that gameplay is short and there isn't too much interesting but there are a few things that I'm not sure if you guys missed or not. So first of all, there is a dungeon, and I'm pretty sure this is the first dungeon by the way, called School Forest. It sounds like a really simple dungeon as well. And basically this will be the forest probably north of the school in the exit of Serene Village. That's the only place I could think it would be located, but yeah, sounds easy like I said. And next place we get to see called Uprise Range. It seems to be maybe a flying dungeon with all the drift loon about and there's probably other flying Pokemon but what's interesting about this one is it actually shows a team attack and this actually has an English name. So it's now known as an alliance when you you know form an attack together and what we can see is like the alliance kind of like it's like you're picking your moves here so you basically select your moves for each Pokemon and I can't remember what it's called on the video because I don't have it in front of me but I think it's like alliance registration process or something like that but that's how you do the team attack and then obviously the team attack happens and I think what happens with team attacks it's like types don't really matter so if it's going to be not very effective I think it just breaks through that barrier it's just going to do a certain amount of damage depending on what level you are and the other Pokemon is which is pretty interesting and it also uses up hunger so so we can see they're on the first floor so we know the hunger won't have depleted much at all and when they've used the like team attack or the alliance it basically goes down, I think it's by 6, and yeah, to be honest, I don't know what affects like the hunger drop, is it, you know, how powerful the move, maybe that will drop your hunger more, I honestly don't know, maybe it's when you've got less hunger, it will use more hunger, it, it's an interesting thought, because obviously, you're going to have more hunger at the start of the dungeon, which you probably won't need it then, so, I don't know, we're going to have to wait and see on that one, but it's really interesting to finally get a few official names. Next up, we can see the connection orb. Now one thing I want to point out, I think I can see in the distance, Meloetta Pirouette form. It, that's just what it looks like to me, but you know, that's just my opinion. So you guys comment down below what do you think that Pokemon is, do you agree with me or do you see it as another Pokemon? At the end of the day it doesn't really matter which Pokemon it is because we all know, you know, that's how you obtain Pokemon, they're all going to be on the Connection Orb eventually. So yeah, and there isn't really much on the Connection Orb apart from you can register favourite Pokemon. Now in my last video I mentioned you can make five teams, so you have, you know, obviously your partner and you, but you can actually make your own five team presets, kind of, like defaults, so you can select them at any time instead of, you know, like in Blue and Red Rescue Team if you ever played that, you'd have to go around to every single friend area, set leader, who you want on your team, but now you can just do it at like a click of a button pretty much, so it's really, really good and efficient. But I don't know what the favourites are for, so maybe if you can't, you like, you filled up all your teams but you still want to get to a certain Pokemon. You could select more as favourites, so you could probably have like 30 favourites if you wanted, or 100 if you wanted, if you were that, you know, like a massive Pokemon nerd like me. There's no shame, guys, don't worry. So, um, yeah, so we'll move on. So we're going to move on to the pictures now. I know they're not as interesting as clips, but yeah, I can't really help that. So in this one, we can see Piplup, which is your partner, coming to greet you at your house. I say your house, it's actually Mr. Nuzleaf's, and basically you're just staying there for the time while you're at Serene Village. So yeah, you're basically just going to school, Piplup says, well, because Piplup literally lives right next door, just coming to pick you up to go to school, which, 
you know, that's what best buds do. And yeah, apparently we're kind of like a school kid in this at the start because Nuzleaf says we look like a school kid. I mean, it's going to be weird and a bit awkward that I'm playing, you know, as a 20 year old and it'll be like, yeah, you look like a school kid. And I'll be like, I'm not sure whether to be offended or happy. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see when I play it, I guess, what my reaction will be. Also, I want to point out, um, it's not in a picture anywhere, but YY Town, which is like the castly medieval looking town which has the Expedition Society, that's actually called Lively Town, and that makes sense because YY Town, which is the, you know the Japanese name for that town, basically just means busy and like bustling full of life. You know, a lot to do there, so that does make sense. So, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a weird town. It's like, oh yeah, where are you off to tonight? Oh yeah, I'm going to Lively Town. It sounds a bit dodgy, but I don't know. I thought they could have gone with Castle Town, something else. I don't know. Well, I, I guess like if you're following translations, it sounds fine. But it just sounds a bit weird to me. But that's just my opinion. You guys might like it. You'd be like, what is this guy on about? So um, I'll move on before I offend anyone. So next up, we actually get to see what some stores are called. Now, we know Holucha's got a shop. This is actually called Holucha's Slam School. So if you haven't seen my videos explaining what the stores do, this is just a little recap. Basically, Holucha can teach you and basically let you forget moves. And you can also change your abilities. We don't know too much on that part, like the ability part. We don't know if there's going to be hidden abilities involved, but that's all we know so far. Next up is Kecleon's store. It's just, that's what it's called, I think. Not much to mention apart from selling a tiny reviver seed. We saw these in the demo, tiny reviver seed. We still don't know what the difference is between this and, you know, a normal reviver seed from back in the day. Probably, you know, revives you at half health or something. That's what I'm guessing, and I think a lot of you guys said that back when I uploaded that demo video. Next up is Kangaskhan's Cafe, which is actually called Cafe Connection, and this makes sense because you can actually, well, it basically ties in with a connection orb. A lot of the Pokemon inside that cafe will have, like, you know, explanation marks above their heads, which mean you can do a mission for them. When you talk to them and accept that mission, they will go into the connection orb, obviously go do the mission, and, you know, they will actually join you in the end, and you can get presents from Kangaskhan for helping people out in her cafe. It's pretty much a win-win, guys, and I can't wait to visit that cafe for the first time. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's a cafe in every single town so far. So you've got one in Serene Village, Lively Town. There is one on the Wind Continent, so it looks like they're trying to put a cafe in every single place. And they look different inside in all the other places, which is a really nice touch. And next up, we can see Configurus' shop, which is just Glorious Gold Bars or Glorious Gold or whatever it's called. Again, it's the same as Gates of Infinity. Never played it, so it's going to be interesting, you know dealing with Configurus for the first time. He seems like a bit of a lunatic, but it's a bit of charm to the game, which I kind of like. He's a bit crazy, but like I said, looking forward to it. Uh, I think basically how this works, if you've got any gold bars on you, you can trade them for items. You know, he'll take them off your hand, the gold bars, and you get items in return. And a certain amount of gold bars will equate to a certain item. I can't remember how you get gold bars. Like I said, never played Gates of Infinity. I used to know, but like I said, I've just never visited him in any Mystery Dungeon game before, so I can't really think. It's probably, I think you find him in dungeons or treasure chests. Yeah, that's it. I think you find him in treasure chests, so... And that's actually a good point, actually, because we're going to move on to Klefki's store. Now, this is called Rockin' Lock. Bit of a, a dodgy name. It's like a midlife crisis name, you, you know, you name for your store. But, yeah, Klefki unlocks, like, treasure chests, and... Yeah, that's pretty much it to it. Basically, whatever you find in that, you get to keep. So, for example, you could find a gold bar in there, and therefore you could get an item from Configurus, and it's pretty cool. And then, if you get the item, you could sell it to Kecleon, and yeah, it's a it's a vicious circle of making money, guys. Next up, we can see you and Nuzleaf on basically a 3DS. Now, I've actually seen some gameplay on YouTube of Super Mystery Dungeon, and the guy playing it has a map on the top screen, which basically you know blocks all the gameplay, which. I've seen, you know, already that you can put the map on the touch screen, which is basically what I'm going to do straight away if, you know, the default is the map's on the top screen, and I advise you guys do the same. But, you know, this just shows you can actually change it for anyone who was wondering and has seen that video, which I'm, I'm assuming a few of you guys have seen it, because I actually checked the comments and saw a few of my subscribers commenting, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, basically what I think about this dungeon is it's the same as School Forest, it looks about the same. And this looks like the first dungeon because, you know, Nuzleaf is giving you a tutorial. And we know we meet Nuzleaf early on because he was basically heading towards the waterfall area where you kind of, like, come into the world. So, yeah, I mean, that's just my hunch. I could be wrong, but we'll have to wait and see, guys. We have a screenshot here of you completing a level, or a dungeon even, 
and it's actually called Berry Forest. We've got another forest here. This is another dungeon that we've never really heard of. And there's actually, just to mention, like we have a few other translated uh, dungeons, but they haven't got official names yet. But I think there's like Drillba Cave and like Glistening Mountain or something, Shimmering Mountain. Honestly, don't know what that's going to be called, but Drillba Mine, if it knows, Drillba Mine. So expect those to be announced soon because that website, it did say, will be updating soon. So definitely keep an eye on it. Definitely bookmark that website so you can keep up to date. Or just subscribe to my channel so you won't miss anything either. But yeah, and one thing I want to point out, and there's some really, really awesome things here. And this is about connecting with your friends, basically. So this is the connectivity part of the game. So basically, we'll start with friend rescue. So if you ever faint and you don't want to lose your items, you can either send out a code to, like, you know, the online players. They'll, you know, obviously type in that code. They'll get the mission. They'll come save you on that floor, and then you can continue on. Or you can actually use infrared on your 3DS get someone nearby so maybe you you know someone in your family or your friend to basically come and save you which is again a nice touch and just to mention I will be setting up a community video which is basically people who have like been you know fainted in dungeons will be able to comment down below on that video hopefully there will be people who check that video every day so they can actually respond to these distress calls I know I will definitely help anyone out if I have time and I'm definitely gonna make sure a lot of you guys you know, make sure you help others in return. And it's going to be fun. You think about that. That's like a kind of a bulletin board in a way. I mean, we don't have that in the game because the connection orbs replaced it. But if you guys like the sound of that, definitely comment down below. That's the question of the day. Do you think that it's a good idea and do you want me to do it? Because I will definitely do it because it does sound like a lot of fun. And the last thing I want to mention, guys, is Street Pass. Now, when you pass other Super Mystery Dungeon players, you can use one of their Pokemon as a helper. So I don't really know how this makes sense. So I think it's. If they've got a Pokemon connected to them, like someone from the Connection Orb, you'll randomly get a Pokemon from them. They'll come on to a mission with you as maybe the third or fourth slot. And apparently you can't control them, it's just kind of like how a random Pokemon would act in the dungeon. They just try and help you out. I'm not sure if they stick with your team or not. I really like the sound of that idea and I definitely think it's a really nice touch. And guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Really hope you enjoyed this one. I actually really, really enjoyed making this video because, you know, there's so much news and I just thought, you know, that was it because I am getting a Japanese uh, copy tomorrow, hopefully. There will be no spoilers, by the way, in the title or the thumbnail, so you don't have to unsubscribe, don't worry. So, guys, if you did enjoy this video, because a lot of work went into it, please smash the like button. Let's aim for around 200 likes again. That would be amazing. If you haven't subscribed already and you're new to the channel and you don't want to miss out on any more Mystery Dungeon or Super Mystery Dungeon news, definitely smash that subscribe button. It's on screen or you can click down below, either's fine guys. And if you haven't seen our two previous videos, as you can see they're on screen now. On the left hand side you can see me explain the new game mechanics in Super Mystery Dungeon. So this is basically additional information about the connection orb, team attacks and the Lapis and Ringo, which actually I forgot to mention have been renamed to Amera and Looplet. So guys, whoever stayed at the end of the video, that just shows you always stick to the end of the video. So shout out to you if you didn't leave yet, because I know most people probably do by now. But yeah, on the right hand side, guys, you can see a video on brand new screenshots and enemies of Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. Don't worry, there's no spoilers really, but it is interesting to see, you know, the last batch of screenshots that we got before the game was released in Japan. So again, haven't seen that, check that out. And guys, that's pretty much it for this video. As always, I hope you have an awesome day. Definitely stay tuned to Pokemon News, by the way, tomorrow. There could be an announcement for Pokemon Z. And for those just shouting at the screen now saying, it's Pokemon Z, yeah, that's how we say it in the UK, so sorry. But um, yeah, so just stay tuned. It might or might not happen, so who knows. But anyway, hope you have an awesome day, guys, and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Peace.